right, everybody. Muscle Car Campy here, and we're about to enter the Hemi Zone. Today you're going to get to experience the legendary Hemi Cuda, what it feels like to drive, how it sounds, what it looks like, very visceral car. Before that though, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell up top so you get notified every time a new video goes live. When it comes to muscle cars, you can argue over which one was the best, the quickest, and the prettiest all day long. Everyone has an opinion, and armed with vintage road tests, hyperbole, and race results, man, there's, you can argue all day long. There's one thing you can't deny though, and that's price. And when it comes to muscle cars, the absolute king is the 71 Plymouth Hemi Cuda convertible. Absolutely the top dog when it comes to muscle cars. One 71 Cuda convertible sold at auction a few years ago for 3.5 million bucks. That's a lot of schkadol. But it gets even crazier. At a Mecham auction in 2021, one of the three export 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles bid to $4.8 million and was a no sale. That's an insane price for a Plymouth that no one wanted when new. The Barracuda was all new for 1970 with a stunning appearance. It really wasn't much of a pony car anymore. Based on the B body, it was really the first hybrid. It was smaller than an actual B body intermediate but it was significantly bigger than the original from 1964. For 71, the grille was updated with four headlights, slightly revised taillights, and if you bought the Cuda, you got four mean fender gills on each side of the car. The four headlight grille came out in 71, and it only lasted that one year. It had the six cheese graters in the middle. I think it was absolutely the meanest looking grille ever, but I, I know I'm in the minority there. A lot of Cuda guys really prefer the uh, single headlight grill from 1970 and in 1972 it went back to a, a two headlight grill with a bigger centerpiece than in 1970 so I guess it's really a matter of individual taste if sales mattered the 71 really uh, stunk up the place didn't really sell very well how did that car the car that was not popular with an option that was even less popular on a body style that was not popular become the most expensive muscle car ever when it comes to resale value 50 years after the fact. Today's feature car is owned by Dan Fling of Florida. It's not one of the 12 original Hemi Cuda convertibles, but it's a stunning, perfectly done tribute car. The best part of it not being one of the originals is that Dan has no problem with driving it everywhere he wants to go. Um, but it is faithful, it has a stock 70 Hemi under the hood. It's got a four speed with a pistol grip shifter. The best numbers we have is that there were 12 Hemi Cuda convertibles built in 1971. Seven were sold in the U.S., two were sold in Canada, and three were exported overseas, one of which was the French car that bid to $4.8 million and was a no sale. In vintage road tests, performance of the e-body-based Hemi Cuda varied from a slow of 1425 at 101 miles an hour in Carcraft magazine to a low of 1345 at 105 in high performance cars. Yes, there was an infamous quote that's always going around that 1339 at 108 from the May issue of Hot Rod in 1970, but that was from a Plymouth ad with Ronnie Sox driving. too bad the clutch it's heavy but it good feel yeah it's good feel heavy heavier than the other than the Corvette ones I assume this brings back memories then for you oh I love it the, the steering the steering wheel mine like yours had the base gauge cluster so it's like old home weekend here for me of course did not have power windows that was uh that was a pipe dream. That was a pipe dream. But I will say it started real easy and Yeah. It also just starts right out of it 
it's a little rough until it warms up. Once that temperature gets halfway to normal running, then it, then it runs real fine. Yeah, I had the uh, performance hood. You've got the shaker. Um, it does look mean out there, you know. I, either way, you couldn't go wrong. But so you own a lot of different muscle cars. You've got a, a GTO Judge. You've got an SS 396 Camaro and some Corvettes. Uh, what made you decide to uh, go for the uh, Hemi Cuda? Actually, I've always liked the Hemi Cuda, and when I was in the service, one of my buddies had a '71 340, and I just didn't like the car. But I never really thought of buying one until uh, a couple years ago. And then I thought, you know, I really would like one to, to top off the collection that I do have. Okay. And so I started looking. And I found the one up in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, Which one? On the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, well, let me fly up and see, see about it.
would be something else. And, you know, I was paying my way through college when I had the car, so even the idea of putting a four-barrel carburetor on it was out of my price was range at the price time. Range. You know, I mean, you know, I got headers. That was my big move, you know. And, of course, the headers on a convertible were a lousy fit. And, <laughs> but... You know, now this is now I, I, I could check this one off the old bucket list. There you go. Drove Hemi Cuda convertible. Might have took you 50 years to get to that point, but you know what? Better to get there. Better late than never. Better late than never. So the whole premise of this video is to let you, the viewers, experience what it's like to drive a 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible. And I'm here to tell you it is glorious. First of all, as soon as you get in the car, you know, you get into those nice flat bucket seats. The driving position is really very good, a lot better than some of the other Mopars of that era. Uh, steering wheel is right there you reach out it's positioned properly uh, I didn't really think I needed a tilt or telescopic wheel it fit me perfectly um, of course the main mistake on the interior for a Hemi powered anything the lack of a factory tachometer I mean that was pretty pretty obvious oversight you just don't know where the thing is revving I mean this is a detuned race engine and even in 1971 with a hydraulic lifter cam, you still want to be able to keep track of the revs. The other thing you'll want to know, how does it make you feel? There used to be a Corvette ad for the 427 in 1966 that said, just starting it made your stomach muscles tighten. And let me tell you, it's exactly the same way for the Hemi Cuda. It's a little rambunctious when it's cold, definitely doesn't start like a modern car with fuel injection. And you know, you got to keep giving it some revs to keep it going. But after it warms up, it's a very, very willing partner. Really felt good, idled, smooth, but not too smooth. It remained a race engine to its core. It let you know it was there, giving you a little bit of vibration in the car. It was civilized, but not too civilized. Everything about it, though, um, functioned as delivered. Uh, now, is this a $4.8 million car? Absolutely not. And he didn't pay anywhere near that. And even though, like I said, it's not a real Hemi Cuda, but he has no qualms about getting in it, dropping the top, and driving anywhere he wants. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Muscle Car Camp, he's saying see you later. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell up top so you're notified every time a new video goes live. Take it easy.